Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me again this week. So this week I'm going to be talking about how to ruin your maths lessons. <laughs> and so if you're interested in finding out my thoughts on how to ruin a maths lesson, then please keep on watching. Okay, so this week I'm going to be talking about how to ruin a maths lesson. And probably the biggest question that I get asked by teachers is, are there any resources out on the internet that I can just use for lesson ideas that are high ceiling, low threshold, that really promote deep conceptual understanding? And I do give lots of different, really great resources from the internet, such as, and I'm just going to name a few, My one of my go-tos is Enrich from Cambridge University. They have wonderful resources and learning experiences for students that are high sitting low threshold from pre-K to 12. Uh, I love Andrew Blair's inquirymaths.com, of course, and I've talked about this before and made several videos uh, on his wonderful work and his website. And if I was to name a third one, at the moment, my current favorite is Mathagon. Polypad on Mathagon has lots of different lesson ideas and learning experiences too that have been pre-made. And this is aside from your go-to Desmos and GeoGebra, of course. <laughs> so even though we have these wonderful resources that we can go to, I think that we can still actually teach a really bad maths lesson given a wonderful resource because at the end of the day, it's not about the actual resource or the specific question or the learning experience. It's how you facilitate that learning experience with your students. And let me give you an example from my book. So my book, Concept Based Mathematics, which is on the shelf on both sides, I have an activity in there called Sine Curves and Spaghetti. And if you haven't seen it, please take a look. I've seen lots of teachers around the world with uh, sign curves using spaghetti, and it always generates a lot of excitement with students. Students are really engaged. And now, how would we teach that badly? So we want students to understand how trigonometric functions are generated from the unit circle. And there are many applets out there on all sorts of platforms that actually show how to generate a sine curve in 30 seconds. In fact, it's probably 10 seconds. So I could get up in front of the class, I could show this applet of how the sine curve has been generated, and then it's over after 10 seconds. I think that there are much more meaningful ways to help students understand the sine curve, not just showing them the curve or how it's generated using an applet, but going through some kind of experience, such as the spaghetti and sine curves activity or any other activity that involves a lot more engagement and interaction with the concepts. And I think this leads to a deeper understanding, even though it takes more time. But that time is going to be saved later when your students are trying to solve those really complex trigonometric equations because they're going to rely on the graphical method and be able to see how to solve those trigonometric equations. So for me, how do you ruin a maths lesson? You ruin a maths lesson by robbing students of the experience, of the excitement, of the exploration into the concept. And you ruin a maths lesson when you don't allow students to arrive at conceptual understandings for themselves. I think that we can create the right environment through intentional lesson design for students to be able to arrive at deep conceptual understandings for themselves so that they can apply and transfer their understanding to any context in the future. So there are my thoughts about how to ruin a maths lesson. If you've got other ideas of how to ruin a maths lesson, please feel free to put it in the comment section below. Thank you so much for joining me again this week, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.